Hello and welcome to the final project of our Django course, where we're going to put everything we've learned into practice. We will build an inventory management system. And if you recall, in the first video of the course, I've shown you a demo of that project, how the inventory management system works, covering a lot of tasks in your website. That includes adding products, viewing the list of products, updating product details, or deleting any product that you want to take out of the list. Now for styling, we're going to use Bootstrap 5 integrated with Django Crispy Forms. This project is going to be divided into two parts, the back end and front end. For the back end, we're going to focus on the server setup, databases, and then we're going to move to the front end to create the HTML pages. And finally, we're going to bring everything together to see our application in action. Now, Django Crispy Forms is a popular Django application that helps you manage Django Forms in a more elegant and dry way. Dry here stands for don't repeat yourself. It allows you to define your forms using Django's form classes and then easily render them in your templates with custom styling. As far as Crispy Bootstrap 5, this is an extension of Django Crispy Forms that will specifically focus on integrating Bootstrap 5 styling into Django Forms. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start creating our project. The first thing that I want to do, of course, is to activate the virtual environment by typing ppnv shell. That's good. Control L to clear the terminal. Now I want to install Django inside my project by typing ppnv install Django. All right, guys, awesome. If you will take a look to the pip file, you will find that for now we have only Django installed. We will need to install a couple of dependencies for the Django Crispy Forms and Crispy Bootstrap 5. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get back to the website where I can uh, just copy this, install Django Crispy Forms and get back to my terminal here and we'll do ppnv and then I will paste that install Django Crispy Forms. The next dependency that I will need is the install Crispy Bootstrap 5. So I can copy everything and I can paste that in and I will change from pip to ppnv. All right, great. Let me just shut that and take a look. We have Django, Django Crispy Forms and Crispy Bootstrap 5 dependencies installed in our project. Now we are ready to start creating our project. So let me open again my integrated terminal. So I'm going to use Django admin command line to start the project. And I'm going to call my project INV project. Let's change directory to INV project. Now, if you will take a look to our components, let me just minimize this a little bit, control L and LS. Now, if you will take a look, we have, of course, manage.py command line and our INV project folder. So I will do Python manage.py start app and I will create my application. I will call it INV app. So we'll have INV project and INV app. Now let's list the components of our folder and we have our INV app, INV project and manage.py. Awesome. Now let me go to my INV project here and to the other folder INV project to settings.py. Let me just close that for now. We don't need that. Now in installed apps, I will need to add three different things. Of course, the first thing I will need to add is my INV app. The second application that I will need is crispy forms. So that's going to be crispy underscore forms. And the third one is crispy bootstrap five. So type that crispy underscore bootstrap five. All right, and we are done with the installed apps part. Let me just go down here below. And I want to make sure to specify the crispy template pack. Um, this is very important if you're going to use Bootstrap 5. So I'm going to declare this variable crispy underscore template underscore pack. That's going to be equal to Bootstrap version 5. This is the latest Bootstrap version, by the way. And we are actually done with settings.py. Now let's go ahead to the env app folder and let's start by creating our models.
Now, in the models, we will need to create a product table in our database. This is the first step. Of course, we will need to set up our database to store the products with the different ID numbers. So for that, I'm going to create a class. Let me just increase the font a little bit. Right, so I'm going to have a class and I'm going to call it product and I'm passing models dot model. Then I will need different fields. Now, the first field in my table, of course, is going to be the product ID, right? So we will need an ID for each product item. The product ID is going to be uh, a primary key essentially in our table. So that's going to be an auto incrementing primary key field. And for that, I'm going to take the models class and I'm going to access a class called auto field. Now the auto field is going to auto increment your ID number. So you don't have to worry about manually enter the ID numbers of each product item in your list. So this is an auto field and taking inside primary key and we're going to set it to true, which means that the product ID is going to be our primary key in our products table. And if you don't know what primary key means, simply this is a unique identifier, right? This is a unique identifier in your table that's going to be assigned to each record in your database table. So that's going to ensure that each record in your table can be uniquely identified and distinguished from others. So for each product item, we will have a unique ID number. The next field that we want is the name of the product. So that's going to take the models class dot car field class and we're going to set a maximum length to the name. So um, we can give a maximum length of let's say for instance 100 characters. Right and we're going to store that in a variable called name. Now I will need four more so one two three four and um, I will need SKU or stock keeping unit. The stock keeping unit basically is um, also a unique identifier for each product. I'm not going to set it as a primary key, but I'm going to give it an attribute of unique, which means that each product in your products list will have a unique SKU number. So uh, that's going to be uh, the stock keeping unit. Also, I will need a price. We will need also quantity and we'll need the supplier of the product. Right, so let's change quickly um, each field. So for the name we are set, maximum length of 100. For the SKU, that's a character field with the maximum length of, let's give it uh, 50, for example, because I see that uh, 100 is too much. Also, let's give it another attribute. So that's going to be unique and we're going to set it to true. Right. Um, also for the price, I will need the character field. No, we don't need, of course, a character field for the price. We need to be float field. So that's going to be float field, right? And I'm going to leave it empty. Now for the quantity, I don't need a character field. Of course, I'm going to need integer field. And the same as the float field, I'm going to leave it empty. I'm not going to pass any um, any parameters. And finally, for the supplier, of course, that's going to be character field because we need um, the characters, right? It's going to be the name of the supplier and the maximum length. Also, I think I'm going to leave it to 100. And uh, the last thing in the product class, I will need a string representation of the product model to return the product name. Um, if you remember in the beginning of the course, when we created the tour agency, we have created also this stir method, just a way to give us a proper string representation of the model. So that's going to be uh, underscore, underscore, stir, underscore, underscore, passing inside the self to the self product, right? We need the self product to be represented through that string. And we're going to return self.name, right? It's as simple as that. This is our product class in our models.py. So we can go ahead and make migrations at that stage. So we'll say Python manage.py make migrations. Good, now we can apply the migrations. So we'll say Python manage the pi migrate. Fantastic, we have applied actually the migrations and if you will take a look to the migrations folder in the 0001 initial, you will have here all of your fields, the product ID, the name, the SKU, the price, the quantity and the supplier. Great, and if you will take a look to the migrations folder, 
if you'll open the 0001 initial pie, you will find here all of your fields have been actually created, right? The product ID, the name, all of the fields that we have created together in models.py. Let's move on to create our forms. So I'm going to create a file called forms.py. Now, forms.py is very important. That's going to be the form essentially to add your product. The name of the product, the SKU, the price, the supplier, all of the necessary information that concerns your product in your database table. And you know, that's essentially everything related to your product's item to be added to your database table. And of course, in the forms.py, I want to create my product form. The first thing that I want to import is the forms module. So from Django, I want to import forms. So I want from the current directory models to import the product class. These are the two things that we will need in our forms.py. Next, I want to define a model form for the product model. So um, I'm going to create a class and I'm going to call that class product form. And inside here, I'm going to pass the forms as a parameter dot model form. Then we'll have a meta class. Now the meta class is going to define different attributes. Now the first attribute that we need to specify is the model, which is going to be our product class. The second attribute is the fields and the fields here is going to include all of the fields from the product model. So in single quotes, underscore, underscore, all, underscore, underscore. The third attribute is the label. So the label is going to be a dictionary of different key value pair sets. And the first key value pair is going to be the product ID. So the product underscore ID that should be written exactly like we have defined them here. So uh, that should be like that in small letters, product underscore ID, the same for the name, the SKU and the other attributes. Right, so let's get back to our forms. Now the product ID is going to be set to um, product. We can write it this way, product ID, right? And we need five more. We need the name, SKU, price, quantity, and supplier, right? So uh, let's do name. That's going to be equal to the name itself. Also, I will need the SKU. I'm going to put it. Uh, in a capital form like that, the price. And finally, we'll need the supplier. Awesome. The last attribute in my meta class is going to be widgets. Again, it's going to be in a form of it's going to be a dictionary with uh, different key value pair sets. Now before coding the widgets attribute, um, let me just talk a little bit about that attribute. This is going to be used to specify the type of input widget that should be used to render each form field in the HTML template. So for example, um, each field of the form is going to be associated with a specific input widget. Let's say for instance that we have number input widget for the product ID, price and quantity fields, which provides an input field for numeric values. Uh, we have a widget for the text input for the name, SKU and supplier fields. And that's going to provide an input field for text values. So that's the usefulness of this widgets attribute in our meta class. So let's go ahead and code that. So the product underscore ID is going to be set to forms dot number input. This is a class that's going to take different attributes. So the attributes now, uh, let me maybe I can just shut the Explorer. The attributes here is going to be in the form also of key value pairs. It's going to be a dictionary essentially. And um, the first one is the placeholder. And the placeholder here is going to be we can say eg1, for example. This is the number input widget for the product ID with placeholder. Also, I'm going to use a little bit of CSS. So I'm going to give this a class form control. All of the widgets actually are going to take the CSS class form control. So uh, that's going to be the second attribute. 
the class is set to um, let's say form hyphen control all right so this is the first item in the widgets um, actually let me just make like that I'm going to separate this by a comma and I'm going to take the product ID and we'll need five more one two three four five we will need one for the name we will need another one for um, the SKU for the price the quantity and the supplier instead of the number input I will need text input and for the placeholder instead of one I can put um, shirt for example right and also it's going to take form control class for the SKU instead of the number input we're going to have also text input uh, the T here is capitalized by the way so I apologize for that for the SKU also I will need text input right and for the placeholder we can um, just put any number or put any code if you want s one two three four five right because I'm very creative um, I'm going to leave it like that uh, let me just put a dot um, for the price and the quantity I'm going to leave it as number input as far as the placeholder for the price I can make 19.99 um, for example uh, that's going to be the same also for the quantity we can uh, just leave it at 1 or maybe you can make it 10 you know you're free to put the placeholder that you want of course and for the supplier I'm going to change the number input to text input and here we can say for instance ABC Corp all right guys great job in the next part, we're going to tackle views.py, where we'll define the logic for handling user requests and rendering the responses. And then we will move on to urls.py file. And the urls.py, as you know, acts as a router for directing the incoming requests to the appropriate views. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you shortly in the next part.